Hi, so now we're going to get started on the automation part of software testing. In the previous videos, we thought about testing using our human intelligence, and now it's time to make the machine to run those tests for us. And we're going to use JUnit, which is the standard way of writing unit tests in Java. And so let's get started. So we have the Roman numeral problem, and this is my implementation. You don't really need to understand it now because we are now using the testing uh, hat. Uh, but if, if you really pay attention or if you quickly pay attention, you can see that my implementation is about getting the current number. Then I look to the next number. And then I decide if I should add uh, or if I should subtract because, because of the subtractive notation that we discussed. But now, as testers, we just want to make sure that this works. So what I'm going to do is create a different class, so the Roman numeral test. And I put this in the test folder, usually, uh, that you can see on the left side of my IntelliJ. So in the Roman package, I have the class there, and it is empty. So let's get started with JUnit. How does this work? It is very simple. We basically write methods, and these methods will do the test for us. So the first one will be, uh, I want to try a single number. So uh, I create a method. It has to return void. Uh, and it has to be annotated with at test. And I'm going to import this from org JUnit Jupyter API because I'm using the JUnit 5 version. Uh, and this at test indicates uh, to JUnit that this is a test. Uh, then the first step is I need to instantiate the class I want to test. And in this case, it's the Roman numeral class. Uh, I'm going to start this into a variable and I'm going to call it just Roman. Uh, second step is to invoke the method we want to test. So roman.convert, and I'm going to pass now a single number that is the test I'm, I'm, I'm doing right now, so i, for example. And I know that in Roman numeral, uh, this result, it needs to be equals, equals to 1. Uh, but that I'm going to write using the JUnit uh, functionality, which is assertions.assertEquals. Then I pass what I expect, which is 1, and the variable that stores the result, so, uh, which, which is named result. So take a look at this, because all your unit tests will look like the same. So we basically uh, think about one of the cases. Uh, in our case, we started with a single number that we discussed in the previous video. I invoke the method I want to test, passing uh, this data. I get the result. Uh, and then I assert, and that's the verb we use, we assert that the result is as we expect. So uh, I needs to be 1. IntelliJ already knows how to play with JUnit, so as you can see, there is even this green uh, run button in here, uh, run test, as it says. If I click on it, and then I click on run single number, IntelliJ will automatically run this test for me. And you see the green result uh, at the bottom of my screen. So this means that IntelliJ executed this method. Uh, it compared the result with the number one. And uh, they were the same. So this means for this behavior, my software works as expected. So uh, we say that our tests are green. And then this means we are happy. Uh, but one test is not enough. In the previous video, we came up with many, right? So uh, let's go to the second one. I'm going to minimize this. And I'm going to write the next. So at test again. Uh, void, and the second uh, scenario I'm going to automate is when I have more than one digit, so like uh, vi, for example. So number with many digits, uh, and this is a nice information. The name of the method doesn't matter. So as developers, we use these to uh, try to express what we want to test. So number with many digits is my case. Uh, I'm going to, again, create the Roman numeral class. That's the class I want to test. I'm going to invoke the method. And now I'm going to pass, for example, viiii. Um, let me start this in a variable. I'm going to start this in the result. And I know that viiii in Roman is 8. So again, assertions, assert equals, 8, result. Um, I have a button here. I'm going to run it again. Or, or actually, for the first time, this is the first time I run this test. And wow, it is red right now. And this means that JUnit executed my test, but then the result was not 8. And this is a bad sign, right? This means that I have a bug in my software. And as a developer, this is actually a good thing, because I found this bug before sending my software to production. My, found, my final user didn't see it. Uh, so what we need to do is 
to go back to the source code and find the bug. So pause this video and try to find the bug. Uh, okay, I'm back. And the bug is actually here. So it shouldn't be just greater than, but greater than or equals. Uh, pause this video, understand why, but that's, uh, that, that is the bug. And that's a common bug, right? We have been discussing that developers do lots of these kinds of bugs. And yeah, this is just another one. So uh, I fixed the bug. What I usually do is to run it again to see uh, if I really fixed it. Result is green. Um, another tip for you as a developer, I'm just running one test, as you can see in, in, in my left bar. Uh, but it's nice if you run all of them. Nice. The two testers are passing. Uh, let's just write one more. So add test again, uh, void. Um, now I'm going to play with a number with a subtractive notation. And if you remember, the subtract subtractive notation is uh, the thing in Roman numerals that you need to put the numbers uh, before. Um, you're going to see it now. So I'm going to create the Roman numeral again. I'm going to convert, uh, and the number I'm going to try is IV. Let me start this. So IV, and then this number is 4, right? So let's make sure uh, it is 4. And we do this by means of assertions. So the result needs to be 4. And this is actually the order that you pass the parameters, OK? It seems uh, not uh, intuitive, but it's what you expect, and then what you calculated, OK? So 4, result, and, no, and not result 4. Um, let's see if our software works. Running the tests, they all run. And uh, also pay attention how fast it is. IntelliJ says that it took uh, 27 milliseconds to run. This is definitely faster than a human. Huh? Um, OK, so the three tests are green. And this means um, so far our, our implementation seems to work. And what I want you to do now is to continue writing many tests. In the previous video, we thought about many of them. Your task is to continue. So this is a very simple introduction to JUnit. Throughout the course, you're going to see more features. JUnit is an amazing framework. Go look at the documentation. But this is what we will do from now on. So we're going to discuss how to think about tests using our intelligence, the, 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 human, the human part of doing tests, as we discussed. And as soon as we have test, a, a test in hands, we're going to automate it. Always, always, always using JUnit. Yeah, ready for it? See you in the next video.